So here's a quick run through of glycolysis. Um, please watch it to the end and if you enjoyed it then please subscribe. So key facts, um, glycolysis only occurs in the cytoplasm, doesn't produce any carbon dioxide, consumes no oxygen, although some oxygen is used when the NADH is regenerated whilst it goes to the electron transport chain on the inner mitochondrial membrane. It produces only two ATPs, produces four, but consumes two, which gives us a net, means overall production of two ATPs. What goes in? Glucose goes in, pyruvate comes out. Glucose is a hexo sugar, it's got six carbons, pyruvate is three carbon. ATP goes in and ATP comes out. ADP goes in and also ADP comes out. We'll look at that in a moment. A coenzyme carrier goes in, which is NAD, and gets reduced because it's picking up electrons and hydrogens and becomes NADH. And additionally, you need some inorganic phosphate. So glucose is a hexo sugar, that's six carbon. First step is it gets phosphorylated and it gets phosphorylated by the ATP going in and this turns it into glucose phosphate. Then it gets phosphorylated again by another ATP going in. Which turns it into hexose bi, bi means two, so hexose biphosphate. Now the next step after that is what's known as the glycolytic step. Now lysis means to break and glyco is glucose, so this is the glycolytic step. Now the glycolytic step is going to produce two triose phosphates, that is a three carbon with a phosphate attached to it. Additionally, a inorganic phosphate is added at this point to phosphorylate the triose phosphate to form a triose bisphosphate. So the inorganic phosphate is added to form a triose bisphosphate. Now that triose bisphosphate then loses the two phosphates onto an ADP, forming an ATP and another ATP. And remember you've got two triose bisphosphates that result from the glycolytic step. So this is going to produce in total some four ATPs. Now we put in two We've made four, so this gives us a net production of two ATPs. Additionally, an NAD is reduced by picking up an electron and a hydrogen and turning it into a reduced NAD or NADH. Now this happens once for each side, so this gives a total production of two NADHs. Now, when there is oxygen present, these NADHs are going to go off to the electron transport chain which is inside the mitochondria on the inner mitochondrial membrane. At that point they're going to deliver the electron which will regenerate the NAD and the NAD will then be able to return back to that process and carry on picking up electrons and hydrogens. Those electrons then go down the chain of carriers join with oxygen to produce water which gives us a proton gradient and this proton gradient is then dissipated by the hydrogen ions flowing out between the gap between the inner and the outer membranes of the mitochondria. They flow out through ATP synthase and they generate ATP. All of that is covered when we talk about oxidative phosphorylation in a future lecture. The end product we've made is two three carbon pyruvates. These pyruvates then go into the matrix of the mitochondrion where they're then going to go through the link reaction and Krebs cycle. Now, if you've got no oxygen present, then the oxygen is not available to pick up the electrons being delivered from the NAD. So you need an alternative way from the being delivered from the NADH. So you need an alternative way of regenerating the NAD in order for glycolysis to occur. And we're going to look at that 
in more depth with anaerobic respiration in, an, in the next video. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe and you'll get the latest updates. Thank you very much.